And with that, I also want to uh, next introduce Shazad Merchant from Extreme to come up here and talk about their views. Excellent. Can everyone hear me back there? I take that as a resounding yes. Excellent. Well, it's, it's, it's truly a fantastic time to be in the networking space, right? Uh, as I look back on uh, the last uh, decade or two decades, uh, uh, I really can't think of a time where there's been more going on in the networking space than there is today, right? There are multiple inflection points all coming together, and really software-defined networking is, is, is very well poised to fundamentally address several challenges that these inflection points are raising. Um, in fact, uh, you know, there's the old joke, right? Uh, how many software engineers does it take to change a light bulb? Right? The answer is zero. It's a hardware problem. Right? And that's changing, right? From uh, uh, facilities to uh, smart lighting systems uh, to networking, software is really becoming a major player in, in all these arenas. Uh, there are a couple of key uh, technology uh, trends and inflection points that we see are very relevant uh, to our business, right? And those are convergence uh, and mobility. And both of these are actually playing out across all sectors of networking. Right? If you look at the carrier side of things, if you look at the data center side of things, and the campus side of things. In the carrier side, right, what we see is, is a fundamental shift from uh, 2G, 3G to 4G LT environments. And those environments, the backhaul, is now moving from TDM circuits to a converged uh, Ethernet infrastructure. Right? And, and there are some key technologies that enable this, right? Uh, PTP precision time protocol, synchronous Ethernet are key drivers to enabling that convergence. In the data center space, uh, you've got three technologies. Uh, you've got fiber channel on the storage side. You've got infinite band on the high performance computing side and Ethernet on the LAN side. Right? And with storage, uh, with the Ethernet now moving to 10 gig, 40 gig, and very soon to 100 gig, data center bridging providing um, uh, better lossless capabilities on Ethernet, storage is slowly beginning to move to Ethernet as well. And with Ethernet switching latencies coming down very significantly now in the several hundred nanosecond range, clearly not as good as InfiniBand, but getting to a point where it's good enough, people are beginning to talk about converging uh, to Ethernet for the high performance computing space as well. So there's certainly that convergence happening there. And the campus space, we certainly saw the last decade with uh, PBX is uh, going to the voice, uh, uh, voice over IP uh, uh, space as well and convergence driving over there. But more so, even today, if you look at how people have deployed Wi-Fi infrastructures and wired Ethernet infra infrastructures, uh, the Wi-Fi data plane has typically been tunneled into a controller. Right? And that's changing with the data plane now becoming converged with the rest of the switching infrastructure as well. So you've got this trend where you've got convergence happening literally across all these arenas. And this is fantastic for an SDN perspective, right? Because now what you actually have is a common underlying transport of Ethernet on which you can start building some interesting applications. Now, the other key trend we're seeing over here is mobility. Right? Businesses are being mobilized. Uh, the workforce is becoming a global workforce, a mobile workforce, and a collaborative workforce. Right? And what that means is people are demanding access to their applications, to their content, to the data, from whatever device they have at their disposal, from whatever network they have at their disposal. Right? and at whatever location they are at. And so the very notion of mobility is now different from what it used to be earlier, whereas earlier mobility was about connectivity, portability. Today, mobility is all about providing a seamless user experience. Right? And this is where we think, at least for us as an infrastructure provider, where software-defined networking plays a pivotal role in fundamentally mobilizing businesses. Right? By being able to simplify this paradigm, by being able to address the challenges that mobility brings into some of these environments. Now, what's interesting is um, if you look at the campus environment and if you look at the data center environment, right, from the perspective of addressing mobility, they actually look remarkably similar. Right? What you have in your campus is a true multi-tenant environment, really. Right? You've got users, you've got employees, for example, and they have their own access rights and privileges. You have consultants and contractors right, who may have access to a smaller set of data. And you may have uh, visitors or guests who have access to a different set of data. Right? And so all these uh, roles of users fundamentally uh, serve as tenants for the underlying infrastructure. All of them connect over a wireless access point or over a wired Ethernet switch. And interestingly, they will roam. Right? You may have a, a real-time session going on on your iPad. And as you move from an access point to access point, you want to ensure that your sessions do not drop. That problem is fundamentally the same as what you have in the data center. In the data center, if you think of these mobile users, as virtual machines, 
right? These virtual machines move from server to server, from hypervisor to hypervisor. And instead of talking to an access point, they talk to a virtual switch. And each of them fundamentally have their own access privileges. Who's allowed to access these virtual machines? Who do the virtual machines belong to? In the cloud, dealing with multi-tenancy, even within the private enterprise, in large private enterprises, these virtual ma machines may belong to different departments, really providing a multi-tenant kind of an infrastructure. And there again, as you think about mobility, uh, the need is ever present to ensure your sessions to your virtual machines stay up as virtual machines move from server to server, from hypervisor to hypervisor. And that's driving this whole notion of overlay networks, which was talked about earlier this morning. Martin did a great presentation from NYSERA talking about uh, overlay networks. That same model fundamentally exists all the way in the campus edge, where the overlays are now from the access point to access point, into the data center, where the overlays are now from hypervisor to hypervisor. In fact, if you think about it, the new network edge in the campus is the access point, and the new network edge in the data center is the hypervisor. Right? Now, this is actually very interesting, right? Because what it allows a company like Extreme to do, and we've got a strong presence both in the data center space and the campus enterprise space, is bring to market solutions that fundamentally uh, can be addressed using a common technology. What software-defined networking allows us to do over here is it allows you to decouple the, uh, the topology, the transport network, from the forwarding decisions that are needed to address these mobility issues. Right? And you can actually take a single model, a single paradigm, where you have a common policy infrastructure, where you can have a common uh, controller model, right? and enforce your policies, enforce your mobility all the way from the campus edge all the way into your data center using a common underlying platform. Right? And that's really powerful because it really significantly reduces uh, the overhead involved in being able to deal with mobility and provide mobility services uh, to your clients. More importantly, it also provides a consistent enforcement paradigm. So whether you're using top-of-rack switches in your data center, or whether you're using campus workgroup switches um, in, um, on, on each campus floor, right, the enforcement model becomes the same once you start using an SDN type of an approach. Right? So it provides a very consistent way of being able to deal with uh, challenges of mobility. So where are we with this from a deployment perspective? Right? I mean, this is good stuff and everything. Who's using this? Right? Are people actually trialing this out? And, and what's the current status? So we are in early trials. I mean, it is early days. There's no question about it. But there is a tremendous amount of interest out there in being able to apply this technology for solving the mobility problem, right? from the campus all the way into the data center, right? uh, because the, the challenges are ever present. Right? So we have deployments going on uh, from a university perspective, data center perspective, large enterprise perspective, and everybody's trialing the technology. What's also happening is that people are building the knowledge base right now to be able to truly understand how they throw SDNs at addressing some of these challenges. But the solutions are still evolving. They're not complete by any yardstick today, right? We're in the process, uh, getting better very quickly with time, but it's going to take time before this actually becomes mainstream, right? And so the question to really ask is, what are the inhibitors to making this mainstream? Right? Not one or two successes here, or one or two successes there, but a broader adoption. Right? What's, what's preventing that from happening? Now, several factors were covered earlier, and I'll quickly run through some of these as well. Right? One of the uh, deployment challenges is really around maturity. Right? 1.2 is just out. 1.3 will be out very soon. Right? When you think about what this means from a deployment perspective for the actual IT administrators, right, is when do I actually deploy this infrastructure? Do I go with 1.2? Do I go with 1.3? Should I wait more? Is it stable? When does the next release come out? What does it mean from my deployment windows, from my maintenance windows, right? That kind of churn is actually forcing people to step back and say, hey, maybe I need to wait a little bit, right? And so the maturity of this is posing a, a bit of a challenge in terms of broad adoption. You certainly have the trials going on, a couple of key success factors, but in terms of broad adoption, I think it's a little bit early in the game. Silicon support, this came up a couple of times today. It's interesting, I didn't uh, think folks would actually bring it up, but this is an issue, right? Is um, as long as you're dealing with virtual switches, it's all in software, you can put all the functionality you need in there, albeit with some cost, right, in terms of CPU, memory cycles. But when it comes to silicon, you're tied to what's in the silicon, right? And today's silicon has not been designed with an open flow pipeline in view, right? Certainly you can map things uh, based on what the silicon offers today, right? But it's not quite there. Another key aspect is if you look at the whole flow processing model, right, uh, the silicon support for large flow tables is also missing today. Now that will change, 
right? Um, it will certainly make, um, you know, uh, become better over time, but there is an inherent trade-off, right? Because you throw gates at having larger flow tables, and, and that adds cost. And the place where you actually need the largest flow tables from this perspective is at the edge where you need the cheapest solutions, right? So there's a bit of a challenge from that perspective. Now, the way to solve this is as you start getting more maturity with, uh, with uh, SDNs and open flow, you can actually start taking away the gates you're using for more traditional functions and start migrating them towards an uh, open flow pipeline. So we will see that happening, and silicon vendors are beginning to slowly embrace this, and, and that's a very, very positive sign. Vendor and solution interoperability, this is also a challenge from today's perspective, right? This is changing again, but when you get out there today mainstream, this is a question that comes up. All right, if I buy a controller from vendor X, will it run with extreme switches? Will it run with somebody else's switches? And will my experience be the same? And today it probably will not, right? It's early days. So a bit of a challenge from that perspective. This is a big one, the expectations, right? And I think this is something for all of us as a community to make sure that we set the right expectations, right? What, all, what happens all too often is people read the press, they read the analyst reports, um, they read what's getting put out there, and people think of this as a panacea. It will be at some point, but today you've really got to approach this from the perspective of what is my problem today and how can I apply SDN in a structured manner to solve my problem? Get some experience with that, get some learning with that, enjoy the success with that, and then build up on it, right? But ex uh, approaching this with the wrong set of expectations is, is only gonna lead to a little bit of disappointment. This is another big one, right? You know, all too often, at least we run into the challenge where when you get out there, the question that is asked is, okay, I can solve this using an SDN approach, I can solve this using an open flow, and perhaps I can solve this using another approach today. If I invest the time and effort in training my staff, upgrading my infrastructure, uh, putting new knowledge base, upgrading my processes and tools, right, is the ROI there to justify this? And, and I think what's going to happen is you're very soon you're going to start seeing actual numbers come out where you can actually start justifying it, but we're not quite there today. Right? But I think those numbers will start coming out as you start getting some more deployment experiences. Now all of this, by the way, is pretty normal. Right? This is not new. If you typically look at the technology adoption cycle, right, this is what happens. You go through this phase where there's a lot of interest, where there's a lot of uh, media coverage around the technology. Everybody's on it, right? And, and what happens is at that point, somebody will have a bad experience. One or two networks may potentially blow up, and then the technology starts getting a bad name. Things go down, but then the community rallies around it, quickly fixes it, gets some new um, uh, use cases that are actually successful, and eventually the technology matures over time, right? So we as a community have to be very aware that what's going on today is very normal. We are still seeing growing interest, which is fantastic, by the way. I mean, I've been at every ONS summit, and the attendance is just growing and growing, and the interest is growing, which is great. But we've got to make sure one of two things happen. The first is either we skip the cycle, right, and we don't go through that dip, and that's possible. Technologies have gone through that as well. Or if we do go through the dip, we as a community rally around it quickly, fix the issues, and you know, the stuff Dan talked about today is so relevant, right, which is get the stuff done, get what is needed in the right time, get it out there, right, so that the solutions get to market quickly enough, and eventually the technology starts uh, going through the phase of maturity. So this is all pretty normal, and I would say this is actually very encouraging to see where we are today. I'll leave with uh, uh, one last slide, some thoughts of looking to the future, perhaps a utopian view, right, as to where things could happen, right? Where things could be is that a large cross-section of switch vendors adopt an open flow-based network operating system, right? That becomes the network operating system of choice, right? And all the uh, work that goes on becomes available in open source. Applications fundamentally become available through an app store, right? You have applications for quality of service, you have applications for policy-based routing, you have applications for identity management, for mobility management. Now, these are not things that you need to develop. These are pre-packaged apps. You can go to an app store and say, I need an application for quality of service, load it on my network switch that is running an open flow operating system, and off you go. It's a vision for where we'd like to be. Right? Controller vendors eventually become app vendors. They build applications, right? And they provide pre-packaged solutions that actually address real problems. So when you go in and deploy these applications, they just work. That's what customers really want to see. They want to deploy this in the network and have it just work. 
Right? So, so that's ideally that would be the uh, the model situation. Switch vendors continue to build switches, just like cell phone vendors build cell phones. And there's Android operating system, and there are applications in that. Right? That can still happen. Right? But there also needs to be an app store, and perhaps the ONF can facilitate the marketplace for all the applications. Right? And so I'll leave with those thoughts, and I'll open it up to questions.